Hi, this is Valerie with 3B Self Design. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how I made a couple um, snake skin pattern silk scarves. It's kind of a long story, but my sister is very a retired police officer, is very afraid of snakes, and I have a slightly overgrown vegetable garden. So when she comes to visit in the summer, she wants the vegetables, but she's not sure about going into the garden to get them because uh, she's afraid of snakes. So I got it in my head that it would be funny to make a snake skin scarf for her, um, maybe as a present. And the problem was I didn't know how to do that. I couldn't in my mind really wrap my head around how you would get that kind of pattern. So I tried multiple versions of this scarf to get to what I thought looked like snake skin. And I actually got two that I thought looked like snake skin, but they were, they were slightly different. They were building on the same thought process. So the purpose of this video really isn't to show you how to make a snakeskin pattern. It really is about how you get an idea, try different things to execute that idea, and that it's okay to, to try something and just have it not work out. So even though you might lose the silk scarf or it goes in the recycle bin, the knowledge you gain from it as to what not to do and also what to do, because there'll be parts of it that you'll be like, okay, I like this, I don't like that. I learned something about using stamps that I think will translate into many different types of patterns and it's a, a new tool I can use going forward. So I hope you find this information valuable and it helps in your creativity. I have made several versions of this scarf so far, I'm trying different tools and different techniques. and. You know, some of them were simply layering color and using salt. But then I decided to try to use stamps to see if I could get the snakeskin texture that I was looking for. So what I did is I took a polymer clay and, you know, made little triangular shapes and kind of scored a pattern into them that to me looked snake-like. And I used these on a couple different versions of the scarves. And... I had pretty good success with this. I mean, I put the Gouda on the raised surface of the stamp and then, you know, just stamp it in and it would leave the line um, of Gouda. Now it doesn't leave a completely solid line that would contain water if you were to try to paint in the cell. Sometimes it does, but sometimes it doesn't. So I wasn't really doing it for that. I was doing it more to, to get the, the pattern onto the scarf because I dye my Gouda black, so when I wash it out, it leaves the black line. So I'm using it more as a paint than as a resist. So, you know, I've got kind of this circular shape. You know, I went on Google, looked at multiple snake skins and the textures in different parts of the skin, and then I've got this diamond shape. And this shape, the diamond shape, worked really well. Then I've got this shape, which what I did was take a palette knife and just make the the um, polymer clay flat and then I pressed into it so you see the point of the palette knife um, but I thought that created a really interesting texture and that looks really good when placed on the scarf and then I did a larger diamond pattern that is the reverse of this one what I found was the polymer clay doesn't did not for me hold up very well to the moisture of the gouda and, and breaks right so it it worked great for the couple scarves I worked on it, um, but for a long-term stamp, I don't think this is the right solution. One thing I, I realized is although I like the, the pattern, I really wanted the diamonds to be smaller. And of course, I was hand carving this, so the smaller you do, you know, sometimes the harder it is. And then I went and did one of my least favorite activities, period. <laughs> I went grocery shopping, but I found myself in the aisle where they sell the barbecue um, supplies. And I saw this and I'm like, that's exactly the pattern I'm looking for. I thought to myself, what if I put the Gouda on here and then use this to stamp onto the silk where the Gouda was and leave the pattern. And I came in one night and I thought, I'm not even gonna bother with that. I'm just gonna put the Gouda on there and I'm gonna take the silk and press it on and see what happens. I've 
turned the scarf around, so now I've got the other end. I'm going to disconnect it from the stretcher. I am leaving space in between, um, it just because I don't want it to be super uniform. And obviously, you know, these diamonds are uniform. So I'm going to come in between them with a different texture. I am back <laughs> which I know to you guys is just like a split second um, because of the lovely edit feature so I take in the triangle the dot of green at the top of the triangle and let it spread forward and because these aren't solid diamonds rather than triangles you know it doesn't necessarily contain it perfectly but that's okay as you can see it's a very <laughs> organic pattern not much control going on here you know every failure is just an opportunity to learn don't let it get you down and it's so true and it still gets you down um, but every time you do something and it doesn't work out like you'll see in this video I this is my fourth attempt at this pattern and you know at the end of the day I I'm not really like achieving some masterpiece by any stretch but I've learned a tremendous amount in painting you have to know the qualities of the paint. I know Viridian Green um, and Royal Blue, the two colors I'm using right now, will move pretty readily. But if I go into that diamond and I just put a drop of water right in the middle, it pushes the dye away. And that's particularly true, like I said, of Viridian and Royal, two card colors. And it, it actually accentuates the diamond and kind of that snake skin texture because then it gives me a little bit of a water ring. And I can tell you all day long what I like to use, but really, everybody's different. I mean, it's always amazing to me that you talk to one artist and they'll say, oh, I love these brushes. And you talk to the next one and they're like, I couldn't get them to do anything. They, they were horrible. They didn't do this and they didn't do that. And it's true for both of them. And it's not that the brushes are different. It's that we're different as humans. We just have a different touch. So don't ever let anyone tell you in your art that you're doing things wrong. There is no wrong. You decide what's wrong based on the effect you're trying to get and the way you want to get it as to whether it's working for you or not. Nobody else can be the judge of that.
coming in, hitting those corners. You got to make sure those corners always get a good amount of dye in them because that's where the fabric's all rolled up. From the hem, the seams. And you don't want to do all this, steam it, and then realize. You got white spots um, on the back side of the scarf where the seam is rolled up, and I've I've done that. Coming in on the other side, what I'm doing is really just putting my brush with the dark colors right on the seam to let it start moving forward into the scarf and again it'll find the area where there's resist and it will kind of naturally stop flowing and even areas where I don't have any resist so there's no diamond shape I can make that with the dye particularly if I already dyed the area because it doesn't the dye doesn't spread as rapidly over previously dyed areas it'll hold its line better Every so often what I do is I take the scarf and I stand it up where I can see it really clearly and evaluate colors and patterns and what I still need to do. You have to step back from it and I have to take it off the table because I can't really step back from it and look down on it in this angle and get the proper view of it. If you've got the scarf really wet though, I will tell you, if you stand it vertical, the dyes will shift down through it. Only if it's very wet, so you just have to be mindful of that. Normally you wouldn't want to do that, put wet dye down on a dried area because you'll get these um, water lines, but with this pattern that actually works nicely. I'm going to deepen that gray. So the age-old question, when do you know you're done? I never do. Really, I get to a point where I'm tired of it and I want to move on to something else. And I'll put it away for, you know, a few days, a couple weeks, and then I'll pull it back out again, fresh eyes, make all the difference. And that's why sometimes it takes me a long time to get a scarf done. Not that I get it to this point, but then actually calling it done is sometimes hard. Because as long as you haven't, well, even if you have steamed it, you can just put it back on the stretcher and do more. If you have steamed it, you can do the same, but if you have the resist lines and you've washed them out, you know, you have to put the resist back down on any place you don't want to you know, have color go through it. And that can be tedious. I think I want to take this blue and just kind of run it along this line right here. Basically just kind of smoothing. I actually really like this color-wise. I'm just kind of smoothing the transition so it doesn't look so, you know, sudden compared to the rest of the sky. I'm going to let that dry. <laughs> I say that it's pretty much dry now. I'm going to let my brain relax a little bit and I'm going to stand it up and look at it because now I have the whole scarf done and I can start to evaluate where I need to make changes. Mm -hmm. 